gentlemen. Today on the Danny G Show, more slow-mo, more cool guns, more buffoonery in general. So, today we are going to, we, we tech, we, I'm going to show you guys how to pull apart the WE slash Cybergun Desert Eagle 50 AE. So, these things are, I've ragged on them so much. Um, it's a, it's a Desert Eagle. Uh, I, I, man, I would never run this on field. It is ridiculous. But I think it does have a place on the wall, on every collector's wall, just for that Agent Smith last action hero feels. That's what, off the top of my head, those are the two sort of most notable movies I remember um, from as a kid, or I, I remember seeing it in as a kid. Um, they are, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I have very, very large hands. And it's still ridiculous in my hands. So, um, I wasn't too impressed. I'm a snob. I wasn't too impressed with uh, Guido's FPS in his review. So, I'm going to show you guys what you get out of a uh, Danny tuned one. Um, and as much as, as, as I rag on them, that uh, do, doing the whole... Uh, slow-mo even even doing some basic shooting with them they feel ridiculous um you do get pretty insane recoil out of these as much as i rag on them uh you get almost as much recoil as the uh gbbrs um in a semi here uh, small form factor smallish it's not small it is not small it is ridiculous so i want to get out of this and then we shall pull them apart. See what's inside. Let's do it. So, we're going to pull this guy apart, I'm going to show you, um, basically I have done zero mods to this apart from uh, your normal smoothing and giving it a better nozzle to gasket seal. But first things first, we're going to chrono him. I wasn't, I actually like the new format of the videos, um, where it's already disassembled and I just put it back together and uh, explain everything as I go. But He's already together for, well, I needed it together for the video, so we'll do that first. And I am a little bit nervous because the last lot of Desert Eagles is what did that. <sighs> Through my carelessness. So, um, get that right. Uh, he can sit on my Pepsi. Oop. Um, what do we need? Gels, Chrono. Has it got a charged battery? Yes, it does. Okay. Oop. Very gentle. Gentle. The problem is the when it comes back, it makes me push I, my arm lets it go forward and it smashes the chrono. Okay. Good luck. Okay. 
I'm 100% gonna smash my Krino. It's just gonna happen. All right. All right. So, oh, is he gonna focus? I didn't smash my chrono, and that's what you should be getting with a uh, decentish seal. Uh, there is no way to get a perfect seal on these because of our cup piston, but um, getting a good nozzle to gasket seal we uh, should be getting some pretty decent FPS out of it. Yeah. All right, so, Jelly Boys. All right, there we go, focused. Um, now, let me know in the comments. So, I, I, again, um, do you guys like it's easier for me doing the videos if the gun is already disassembled and I'm just sort of explaining what I've done while I put it back together. Some models do require, they have some little finicky takedown bits, like you've got to undo a lug or something like that. Um, these guys really don't have anything special in the takedown. You can watch a assembly video and figure out the disassembly from there. Um, off the top of my head, the P99. Uh, the safety lever at the front of them. I don't have one. It's currently... Um, there's some R&D stuff going on with the P99s. There may be some more coming soon. Um, but yeah, nothing special about the takedown. It was just... I had to... I, I don't have... They all sold out. I only had this one left, so I needed one together to do the... Uh, stupid little Matrix video with. But let me know in the comments. Do you like the full teardown or just the put back together. I don't know. I go off what you guys tell me to do. Um, so we shall rip this little guy apart and see what's inside. Um, I can chill. What is there to tell you about our initial takedown? When you first get them from factory, I did find a lot of the recoil rods very much wedged into our little assembly, which we're gonna see. After you um, take it apart a couple of times. Yeah, you'll, um, they, they come out pretty easy peasy. So I think, yeah, again, just a tolerance thing after the uh, frame gets a coating. The little holes in there that they slot into are um, very tweet. So long can go there. We'll do our we'll do our upper first. Come on. Okay, so obviously easy peasy. First things first. I think he comes out of that. So I always, there's always some sort of sign if you look really close at, you, you'll notice I'm always really finicky with uh, what side the threading goes in. It's just because the more you, whoa. <laughs> The more you take your device apart um, and mess with it, the more times you punch these out, you're wearing it, so you do want to sort of keep it on one side, I guess. Um, but there's always like telltale little scratches from which side the lug was on when it goes in. Uh, so that's how your barrel comes out. Pretty easy peasy. Um, yeah, make sure this guy's smooth. He's good. Use a good barrel. Now, our slider Rooney. I am, I, I've been pretty good lately. I randomly 
always put these on upside down and I see <coughs> I do see heaps of photos online where they're on airsoft forums and whatnot or airsoft pages where people have done the same thing they go just just for future reference they go pointing down so these are really really easy on the disassembly uh, the only difficult part if I recall correctly with my goldfish memory um, the only difficult part is the getting the hammer yeah getting getting our hammer bar back in which we'll see when we pull this guy apart um, and another interesting thing which I do really like about these and it just adds to the um, overall longevity I guess they don't have a pin they have um and you can put you can put a pin in there you can put a little detent pin whatever with a spring but they actually have a nice little plate but also when you put it back together make sure that the like bump on the on the plate is facing downwards so that's one Now, you're going to want to do what I assume every single person does first time they pull one down. Try and fucking just push this fucker out. No. Don't do that. Your nozzle actually uh, sits in between this. If you try and smash that out, your nozzle will go poopy bye-bye. Oh, yeah. So that's our bar. It is, um, what's the word? Double-sided. I mean, only goes in one way. Or well, goes in both ways. Doesn't matter which way you put him in. So he's cool. That is the wrong screwdriver bit. Oh, sorry, guys. Be chill. Okay. Another really, really big thing with these is the amount of force you have dragging. Uh, the, yes, the nozzle does look like an M4 nozzle, but that's not what makes it like an M4 nozzle at all. It's It has one similarity with the um, open bolt GBBR nozzles, but not in the way you think. It's just in terms of function. So um, they're just a standard... Uh, pistol GBB um, nozzle piston setup, nozzle piston setup with O-ring cup. Um, unfortunately, you can only get a cup piston for that. And I don't like cup pistons because they are designed for... <sighs> Fuck your CO2 guns. Um, they're designed for CO2 guns that or higher pressure devices in general. And no matter what, when you're using a cup type piston, there is always initial loss before it spreads out and seals. No way around it. You don't need, um, yeah, yeah. We don't, I don't, we don't like, we don't like those around here. So he's coming in. A springy boy. So. Springer Boy sits on the, well, if we're looking at it like this, the right hand side. Bloop. You can chill. So, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't lock tight anything when I put this guy back together. Because um, I knew I was doing a video. Uh, so, we'll lock tight him as we put everything back together. Now, our. Come out, boy! Sight 
is basically just held in by the back of the BBU, that knob there. So it sort of sits in there freely until we push this guy in. Now we can look at, so I have two gripes with this device. Two gripes, two things that I do not like and they need, yeah, one of them is eh, it's like a preference thing. Um, this one needs to be rectified. So the only way we're doing that is with a custom uh, O-ring piston type. Um, the best you can do with these cup ones is boil it till it's red hot and then soak it in WD-40 to try and get it to swell as much as possible. Um, so that does help, but uh, more often than not, the second you stretch them out, it's too tight in the nozzle and it's too much friction here. Um, they're just not as good as a O-ring type. That's my techie preference, but if you're a douchebag and run CO2 mags, obviously this sort of um, piston setup is preferable. So, I don't know if we want to put the slide back together first and then we'll do the law. Yeah, look, yeah, no? No, we're doing a full disassembly, so we'll fully disassemble everything. <coughs> and then we'll put it all back together. All right. So my only uh, annoying part in uh, this takedown is in the actual hammer set. Other than that, it's a really, really easy takedown. Uh, Woo! So you do need to so to get your grips. This is a strength, a little bit of a um, force, you need a little bit of force here. So I can, there we go. Get off boy. He's all over, he's coming, he's coming. There we go. There we go. Whew. All right. They're very solid. Okay, so this little uh, Duba Hickey, he's gonna come out like so. And there should be a spring, there you go. Give me a thingy. So it's like an easier version of a um, M9 lock-in level. We're gonna take our front section out. And how loose that is after me um, giving it a little bit of a uh, stress test with a video shoot. Uh, yeah, you, you definitely wanna lock tight this guy in. So now we can all right, now, this is fiddly. It's a little bit annoying. Don't just push this pin out. So there is a, that's your um, slide lock. So the main pin for the slide lock actually holds, if we can, if I can focus up in here. Focus, magic. Can we see that spring? So that spring sits in a little divot on this pin. And if you just push that out, you're gonna warp that spring and it's gonna cause you nothing but trauma. So let's actually refocus that so you can see what I'm doing. So all we're gonna do is lift the spring off and push that pin out a little bit. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, our front frame should just slide out with our trigger bar. Trigger bar, like so. Now, I did have, I had an issue. There was a reason 
this. Um, there was a reason this deagle got set aside while we were doing our QC, or like basic run through. Um, it wasn't resetting the trigger every time. Um, so the, the best way to explain that is after your slide cycles and goes back into battery when your finger is down on the trigger, there should be enough tension on the spring in here. So that spring makes him lift up. There should be enough tension on now when you've got it fully depressed for this to lift back up. Um, which it did not. That spring was a little bit bent, so it would work most of the time. And then occasionally, once it'd go back into battery, um, this wouldn't lift up correctly to reset our trigger position. So you just have to like let it go back forward. So that was a random drama that I had uh, with this particular one. So we will take out our magazine catch thing. Um, this one's weird. It is literally just a top plate for this. So this is the actual mag catch part itself. And it just screws onto a bar. I don't know if it's like lazy engineering or whatever. It's good. It's 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 really good. It just seems stupid. I don't know. Maybe it's just like that's the that's your your peak design for that. I feel like this could apply to a lot of other um, pistol designs. This type of mag release. Yeah, what do you guys think about that? I, I, I don't know. I'm, is it genius? Or is it, like, dumb as fuck? So, he could chill. Hmm. Yeah, left to right, left to right. Lugs went in that way. Well, they went in like that. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Come on. There we go. So these are the same size for your frame. They don't matter. I'm not gonna mix them up. They're cool. Now our hammer set should just plippity ploppity out and I don't want to lose that spring please don't fly off and that's a DE 50A frame you can chill here for a sec buddy okay he's not going to flick off that's cool <sighs> I'm just, I do recall on assembly, this guy flicking off. That's why I was being extra careful with him. I no, normally I really don't care about um, valve knocker, blocker, release, valve knocker things. Okay. This little dooba dicky, dooba hickey, thingamabobby, is kind of, <coughs> excuse me. It's weird, but it's kind of super duper simple and genius. And I don't... I think the M9, I think the WE Gen 2 M9 hammer set is a better design in, in terms of actual design, but in functionality, not so much. I think this is an actual better functional design um, man, I, I don't know how to describe uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say here. I think this is a more practically usable, like real world, real lasting, will last a lot longer than the Gen 2 M9 hammer set, if that makes sense. And I am a very big fan of the... 
meow, meow. We are the Bucky Bucky boys. Um, if I can get this little guy off. So as much as I rag on uh, Desert Eagles being wanker guns, um, I think this hammer set is very, very well designed. So that's our valve knocker blocker. And I really like um, the Tokyo Marui Desert Eagle has the has a similar um, valve knocker. So it's not stock. You, I, I think you do need a CNC one. Um, but I think overall it's a really, really efficient design for a valve knocker, locker, blocker, unlocker. <sighs> so these, this is my bit with the hammer set that I don't like. You have, I'm going to try and focus this. Magic. You have a little pin here, little roller doobahickey that the hammer bar actually slots into, if you can see. It just pushes through, and that's what's holding our spring on, and that is sitting in these little grooves. It's got two little things on each side. It's very, very annoying, if I recall correctly. I did have a lot of difficulty getting this off. Or not. Okay. Well, it's very easy to get off. Getting it back on. That's the, uh, yeah, difficult part. So, uh, what I was trying to explain before is this little bit that sits at the bottom. Oh, I can't even grip it properly. This little guy that sits at the bottom slides onto the hammer bar and is what holds our spring on. Whew. Yeah, getting them back on is going to be a little bit difficult. But we'll get there. Okay. Get out of there, boy. So, hammer is held in with a little brass pin. Which we can push out from the other side. He's cool. Now he will just slot out. So, you can only get that out with this off. Um, it can only slot in through there. So that's our valve knocker, if I can get him out. Whoop. Spring's still in there. So you can actually get a stainless steel one of these from RATEC, which I have a few of them coming um, in the next shipment. So. Um, we'll see longevity wise with a tune a um, with a tune and a uh, bit of a uh, test use there is very there's nowhere on that at all so I think you really I think that's for your CO2 mags I think these will um, cock it pretty quick on the CO2 so hammer Valve knocker, valve knocker, locker. And we need a seal. Yeah, that's right. That's the thing that locks the hammer back. Okay, so he's held in with just a big lug and his spring as well. There we go. So we're going to have a little, this is how it works. So, this bit up here is what our trigger bar is clipped into. And all it does is pull him forward. And you've got the spring on this guy pushing him back at all times. When you, so this is how he should like normally sit, I guess, in the hammer set. When you pull your slide, it locks back onto that little ledge there. 
then when you pull the trigger bar forward, comes forward and hits, there's a reason there's a hole in that, hits our valve knocker forward. Bang. Bang. So, as long as there is nothing grindy or gross um, fab-wise on any of these lock-in points, um, hit it with the sandpaper, give it a polish, and you have got yourself a very smooth um, little device. And that pin just fell out. So, our spring for um, our valve knocker pin. There we go. We've got two pins that hold our things in there. So that is a fully disassembled deagle. Um, and now that's the end of the video. I'm done. Fuck you. No, I'm joking. All right. So now we can put this guy back to part, back to part, back together. Hammer set first, because that's the most annoying bit. I feel like I'm going to have a lot of difficulty with this guy in the gloves. But uh, we shall see. So these are still um, pretty oiled. The only thing I, I really want to do is make sure I lock tight all screw points as we go. Like these little guys. Uh, but I will do that after we get our hammer in. So hammer last actually. First, we're going to put our sear in, then we're going to put our <coughs> valve knocker in, and then we will put our hammer in. So, pretty easy peasy. Everything slots in. So, this goes in, spring goes in. This guy goes in, spring goes in. Whoop. This guy goes in, spring goes in. Um, very modular-ish. I, yeah, I very much appreciate that. Uh, so we'll do our valve knocker first. No, we'll do our sear first. I'm an idiot. So this guy does need... Um, I think we've got to put our spring in at the same time. With this guy. Shall see if I remember what I did. It'd be really funny if there was, um, if the microphone wasn't recording at all. So I should just be able to, you, you, oh, no, 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 don't do that, lads. Don't do that. That was silly. So we do actually, woo, have to rearrange him. Um, we got to hook him through there first, if we can do that. And then I've got to. Give me that spring. Okay, so if we hold him in like that, then we can feed our spring through. Oh. I need my um, pokey boy. Come on, lad. Like so. I can hold him. Hey. There we go. See her in. Now I can put our valve knocker in curvy boy part to match our little bevel on the front and make sure that it actually slots into our um... god damn it get out of there so you have to um, get this guy through the hole in the middle of it.
which should be relatively simple. Uh, but I'm me, and I make everything look difficult. So here we go. Try again. You, you, you. Hold him there. And feed our little pen through. Yes! Alright. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that looks like it functions. Now I can put a hammer in. So all I'm going to do is chuck his little bar in. Hey. Why are you tight, boy? Don't be tight. cool. Excuse me, Mr. Seal. So we can actually test that functioning. Let's see, it should lock in and hold, and then we should be able to pull him forward, and everything should reset. Okay. It's a Loctite. Well, excuse me. Okay, valve, knocker, locker, blocker, unlocker, thingama, joker. So it does have a little groovy clippy boy side that facing upwards. And he's just gonna sit on there like so. Oh, hang on guys. Someone's just ringing the doorbell. Give me a sec. <gasps> Alright, I have returned. Okay, so we've got our valve knocker, block around locker. We've got some blue in our holes. I think we are ready to put this guy back on. Put some more screw him back in. Then we can enjoy the arduous, beautiful, relaxing task of getting this guy back on. The most fun. I think I'm going to need this guy. <laughs> uh, Alright. How did this, how does this work? Fuck my life. It's going to flick out and kill me. They're very strong springs, all right, lads. Fuck it. I think what I did is I got this guy relatively well positioned forced it on and cried a lot. <laughs> Man. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on, Dan. Come on, we got this. Not gonna cry today. Oi! Oi! No. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We got this. No. I hate deagles so much. I take that back. I fucking love deagles. God damn it. Oh. See, it's not even hard. If you can't do it that easily, basically, um, they have special schools for people like you. If you can't get it on that easily, um, just just quit. Your life's a joke. Um, no, I'm really surprised that it actually worked and I possess the required um, finger strength to do that. That's... Mash! Get in your hole! Hang on, I gotta push him in. There we go. Get in. It's not gonna go on properly if I am. Don't make him flush. Okay. So, now that the easiest part of the assembly is out of the way, I think we can finish doing the rest of our lower. So I'm going to put this guy in. Apprehensively. Not willy-nilly. I'm not fucking around here. Oh, sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing. So all I do is I, with my little springy boys like this, I use a scalpel to slot them into place. Just because it's really easy to get in the links. And... <coughs> oh, excuse me. And pull him back and put him in. So that is a hammer set, ready to rock and roll. Put our mag catch back in, I think. So groovy part to the inside of the mag well. It's a bit hard to see on camera, but there is a little groovy side in there. Groovy, baby. This one, I am not going to lock tight. He should be fine. So we can slot our... Hammer set back into place. Ah. Hey. Okay, this guy should. It's going to be annoying. There. Got there. There we go. There we go. There we go. No. There we go. Nice and toy. So that was my other gripe. So I've got a gripe with the, um, I got beef with the piston, the piston head, and I got beef with the uh, grip. So the grip is really cool. It does have that little springy mech, which I'm not showing you guys a pull up on. Uh, it's that simple. You'll, you'll see it when you do it. It is, it is a really cool grip, but it's really doesn't feel like good quality plastic at all. It feels really, um, yeah, very plasticky. I don't know, like, would a... I've held a real Desert Eagle um, at Cleaver's Firearms. Cleaver Firearms, whatever it is. Um, and I don't remember if it had plastic grips or not. 
So you guys are gonna have to let me know in the comments if the real one's doing not, because I don't know real guns at all. Um, that's my only other gripe. So we got a piston. We need we need a better piston, and we need like better grips or whatever material grips. Um, I think even a nice solid like nylon polymer. They're very plasticky, uh, polyurethane plasticky. Uh, so that's our hammer set in, done, dusted. Now we need some sort of way to make the hammer set do its thing. So we got a frame, got a trigger boy, gadunk. This little doobahickey is just gonna chill like so, like a good lad. Should just chill if I hold him like so. No? Basically, you loop this guy under here before you um, put him in, and then curve. Uh, am I? I'm totally not even getting that. God damn it! How dare you! Wait! 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 Incorrect. Pretty sure I can just do that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that is much, much simpler. I, uh, yeah. So loop your trigger bar in first. Loop him in under there. Make sure that it actually is connected. Feed the trigger just through the mag welder and oh, drop your frame in. Now, we can do the uh, sidey bits. So our bevel bit sort of wants to face upwards, our little slot. Hey, 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 excuse me. There you go. Through the hole. And then this guy. We'll just slot through like a mad lad. Hey, excuse me. I just said you were... Yeah, there we go. Now we need some blue in that screw hole in there. Good old chunk of blue. And we're going to um, not shoot this for a good couple of hours after I put it back together. Just to um, give all the blue some time to set. I know what's wrong in my head. I literally can't. I have trouble calling it Loctite. Like, I, it's blue. I just know it is blue. Nice and tweet. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know what may help? The thing that holds the trigger in place properly. Duh. Yeah, unlike other guns, this, this is important to our... Um, function. Unless there is other models that rely on the mag catch pin holding the trigger in place that I can't think of. Um, the M9 is similar, but it doesn't need this, this pin to hold the trigger in. as a uh, separate mech for it. That little springy boy should just go into his slot. Hey. There we go. chill there for a sec. That is a functional lower. An assembled ready to rock and roll lower. And he can chill over to the side here. <coughs> Just for a sec. This thing. I'm going to put some blue in your holes and then you're getting your other thing back in your... Okay. Whoop. 
Um, don't go crazy with it. Any excess that squirts out when you screw, when the screws thread is going to wind up through your build. Just so you're aware. So, not too crazy. And the more you use, the harder it's going to be to get apart when you do need to disassemble it. So bear that in mind. All right, so this is pretty easy peasy. So let's just like, oh, okay, that was disassembled. Piston head, on. Nozzle, on. Springy boy, sits. Oh. Oops. Sort of do it at a little bit of an angle, just so spring is cool and isn't gonna fly out. And, uh, oi, 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 oi. Nah, I think I did not get that right. Yo, oh, yo. Easy peasy. Okay, so we're gonna screw our BBU in. And then we shall get the rest of the bits together. Yeah, for a basic teardown, if you're not fully, fully tearing the hammer set apart and such, they are really, really simple. Um, and I'll give that, I'll, I'll, I'll give the Deagle that as a, um, as a positive, as a pro. There's many, many, many cons to be said about the Desert Eagle in general. Um, but I think... Like, if you are a fucking hulk of a human being, and you can straight up, like, dual wield two Desert Eagles, you absolutely deserve the right to be able to do that. And, um, like, if you can comfortably do that, I am not going to say, uh, I'm not going to make fun of you, because, <laughs> yeah. Nice and tight. So I will give him a little bit of a lubing. Oh, oh yeah, loop me up. There we go. Boom. All right, so we've got our little lug boy. So all that does is sit in the middle and your nozzle will hold him in for you. Make sure you pull your nozzle forward first. Don't break your nozzle. Um, so these little logs, um, they'll go in either side. They're multi-directional, whatever. Um, all they do is help orientate, orient our thing actual physical switch part no 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 what am I doing I forgot the most important thing on one of our most high movement areas I need some blue in these holes me yeah, a little bit more blue Look, they're big holes. Oh, we lost our log. It's okay. Big old dollop of blue. Okay. Now, do we have our pin the correct way. Is the pointy bit going down? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Ooh. Nice. 
nice and tight. Make sure our little bumpy bit is facing down. Let's go, oh, there it is. That is, yeah, it's still pretty well greased. Out of barrel and barrel. Which way did our log come out? Ah, oh, I can see loggy, scratchy boys on that side. We do want to have that flush as well, because, ooh, because oh look, you can leave it out, but it is when you, it, it's a solid fixed piece when it's locked in, but it will wind up scratching the inside of your frame. So try and have your um log flush. I may want the rest of the slide first. So there is a little bit of a trick to this. Um, you sort of just want to make sure that these are not too spread apart and hold it with your thumb. And you can just, they'll um, guide themselves into their little holes like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a fully disassembled, fully reassembled, everything all Loctited, nice and tidy, tidy whitey, uh, WE slash Cybergun slash ECCCCCB, lots of C's, B's, um, <laughs> Desert Eagle 50 AE. Obviously, it's the exact same internals as the L6. Um, yeah, so my two gripes are grip and piston. Let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously, there's the little Danny hater crew. Uh, you can all go fuck yourselves. No, I love you guys as well. You, you still give me views. <laughs> like, try to talk shit, but it literally still goes on to the algorithm. So, keep going. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about the Desert Eagle. I think they're a fucking wanker gun, but they're kind of fucking awesome as well. So, like, they are a wanker gun, but they're fucking cool. Um, anything that I've missed, tech, techie-wise or whatever that you guys want to know, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So, next video coming should be, possibly... Uh, another M4 one where I show you guys what they do with full CNC decked out RATEC bits. Uh, but other than that, yeah, there's your Desert Eagle. Enjoy. Peace, guys.